Alexei Brodovich was a photographer, designer, and instructor. He was born in 1898 in Ogolich, Russia. At the age of 16, he joined the Russian army and served in the Russian Civil War. He was eventually reunited with his family, and they moved to Paris, France. During this time, he did a few side projects to build up his portfolio. As time went on, he started working part-time creating layouts for the art journal Cahiers d'Art and the design magazine Art et Métier Graphique. In 1924, Alexei entered a poster competition for an artist soiree called Le Bal Banal and won first prize. This gained public recognition for Alexei. His success continued and he was hired by the design studio Atelier in 1928. While at Atelier, he continued to work as a freelance designer on the side. Eventually, he opened his own design studio named L'Atelier AB. He later moved to Philadelphia to be the head of the Pennsylvania Museum School of Industrial Arts Advertising Design Department. He continued to do work on the side and one of his works was recognized by Harper's Bazaar's editor-in-chief, Carmel Snow. She offered Brodovich the job of art director at the magazine. He stayed there as art director for 24 years. Later on, he was part of a collaboration in a publication called Portfolio, which was a graphic design magazine. Brodovich passed away in 1971 in France, where he was close to his friends and family. Milton Glaser was born June 26, 1929 in New York City. He has the distinction of one-man shows at the MoMA and the Georges Pompidou Center. He also founded the New York Magazine along with Clay Felker in 1968. In 2004, he was selected for the Lifetime Achievement Award of the Cooper Hewitt National Design Museum. He became an articulate spokesman for the ethical practice of design. Glazier opened Milton Glazier Inc. in 1974 and continues to produce large amounts of works in many fields of design to this day. Alexei Brodovich was influenced by a variety of art movements, like surrealism for example, like how he would make the pages appear to have been ripped through by women. He also embraced technological developments from industrial design, photography, and contemporary painting. He has a broad curiosity, so he assimilated what he thought to be the most interesting aspects of a variety of fields of work. While working in America, he thought that Europe was ahead in terms of design, so his work was highly influenced by his past and his colleagues from Europe. It was said that Brodovich was perhaps the single most powerful influence on the development of practicing artists, designers, and photographers of his time, and he left an incomparable legacy of living talent. In 1954, Milton Glaser, along with Reynold Ruffin, Seymour Schwast, and Edward Sorrell, founded Pushpin Studios. For 20 years, Glaser, together with Seymour Schwast, directed the organization, which brought about a powerful influence on the direction of world graphic design, culminating in a memorable exhibition at the Louvre Museum of the Decorative Arts in Paris. In an interview with Brad Holland, Milton Glaser stated, for me, Picasso and Morandi represent the full range of human artistic possibilities. Morandi was parochial and narrow. He went to Paris once, didn't like it, and never went again. He lived modestly. He was an academic bureaucrat. He taught at the academy three times a week. He never married. He didn't seem to be interested in money, fame, or woman. He painted about three portraits of people. The rest are landscapes. They're not familiar, but they're not the same kind of paintings as his still lives. He would make the slightest change. Move a passage of, of gray a quarter of an inch. If you wanted to buy a painting from him, he would write your name and address on the back. Then, years later, after he had finished the painting, he'd send it to you. He was selling paintings then for $200. Picasso, on the other hand, was the most egocentric, narcissistic man in human history. For him, there was no world except Picasso. People were just instruments to be used like subjects of a painting. He wanted all the money, all the fame, all the accomplishment. He sucked all the air out of room. I can't imagine two more opposite manifestations of human potential, and I think I am equally affected by both. Morandi's dedication, his simplicity, his desire for nothing except the work, his modesty. And this raging lunatic who wanted to devour the world. Alexei Brodovich has a large variety of kinds of works he created. The first work that Alexei Brodovich was publicly recognized for was his poster design for the artist soiree, La Balle Banal. He then did work for the design studio Atelier in 1928 to design and illustrate their catalogs and advertisements for their luxury men's boutique. He went on to start his own studio called Atelier à Bay, where he produced posters for Union Radio Paris and the Cunard Shipping Company. Also, the Parisian publishing house La Pelade 
commissioned him to illustrate for a few books. The main portion of his work, however, was for Harper's Bazaar magazine. He was innovative with the layouts in ways people had not seen before. He would crop images unexpectedly or off-center and use the forms in the photographs as a cue of how to handle the text. In his earlier years at Harper's Bazaar, he would use multiple photos on a page and arrange them like playing cards, for example. Later on, however, he would use only one or two images per page but continued to make them visually interesting. He would do things like tear the edges of the photographs, make the pages look like they had been torn through, or use photos of isolated body parts. At the time, color in magazines was also fairly new, and he used color to add a sense of luxury to the magazine, using it to make things bolder and brighter. Even after color was used commonly, he still used it to create bold emphasis. Although he did not do the photography himself for Harper's Bazaar, he was still a large part of how it looked. He preferred on-location shoots opposed to being in a studio. He encouraged jarring juxtapositions and often used cinematic effects. He also enjoyed making spatial illusions within the photographs. After moving on to work for the graphic design magazine Portfolio, he was able to have unlimited creativity. Milton Glaser is one of the most celebrated graphic designers in the USA, best known for the I Love New York logo, his Bob Dylan poster, and the DC logo, used by the DC Comics from 1977 to 2005. In 1968, Glaser and Clay Felker founded the New York Magazine, where Glaser was president and design director until 1977. The publication became the model for City Magazines and stimulated a host of imitations. In 1983, Glazier teamed with Walter Bernard to form WBMG, a publication design firm located in New York City. Since its inception, they have designed more than 50 magazines, newspapers, and periodicals around the world. WBMG has been responsible for the complete redesigns of three major newspapers, The Washington Post in the U.S., La Vanguardia in Barcelona, and The O Globo in Rio de Janeiro. It has consulted and designed projects from, for the Los Angeles Times, the Boston Globe, and the New York Daily News, and the New York Post. Magazine clients in the United States include Time, U.S. News, and World Report, Golf Digest, Auto Week, and Wine Spectator. WBMG has created original prototypes designs for Manhattan Inc., Windows, the Journal of Art, ESPN Magazine, and has also designed the American Express Annual Report for three years, as well as several books. Milton Glaser Incorporated was later established in 1974. The work produced at this Manhattan studio includes print graphics and produces identity programs for corporate and institutional marketing purposes, including logos, stationery, brochures, signage, and annual reports. Glaser is also personally responsible for the design and illustration of more than 300 posters for clients in the areas of publishing, music, theater, film, institutional, and civic enterprises, as well as those for commercial products and services. In addition to commercial enterprises, Milton Glaser's work has been exhibited worldwide. Most notable are the following exhibitions, a one-man show at the MoMA, New York, and the Centre Georges Pompidou in Paris, as well as the Lincoln Center Gallery in New York and the Houghton Gallery at the, Cooper at the Cooper Union in New York. From the start of his career, Milton Glaser has been an active member of both the design and education communities. He has been an instructor and a board member at the School of Visual.